Well, what's favorable for detection is the fact that they are so extremely abundant, to the tune of 100 trillion going through your body every second. It turns out that if you build a detector large enough and leave it on for long enough, a small percentage of these neutrinos will interact often enough that we can detect them. In fact, they were confirmed experimentally in 1956, 26 years after first being theorized, by physicists Fred Rines and Clyde Cohen for which a Nobel Prize was later awarded. Their detector weighed 10 tons and was placed near a powerful fission reactor. The fission and fusion processes produce a lot of neutrinos. For example, the tremendous fusion reactions inside stars like our Sun is the reason these particles are so abundant. How are they produced in the fusion process? When the Sun fuses hydrogen to helium, this is a multi-step process, the end result of which turns four protons into a helium nucleus consisting of two protons and two neutrons. This process produces two positrons and two neutrinos. 